Where can you find a place in Brisbane that has this many different species of birds? I, I think one of the nicest things is to wake up in the morning to what we call the dawn chorus. Norman Creek was a mosaic of wetlands and dense hoop pine dominated dry rainforest. And that would have been in patches all the way up, as well as open land. The area of Norman Creek was a prolific spawning ground for prawns that then uh, were washed out uh, into the Brisbane River. Norman Creek was a tidal impacted creek then. Aboriginals could, within a few minutes, with their nets, bring up hundreds of fish. It's not the creek, it's the creek with its floodplain. They're part of a whole, a, a dynamic unit, and so the creek moves around on the floodplain. If the first settlers here had recognised the floodplain and said, OK, we're not going to build on the floodplain, um, they would have saved themselves a lot of heartache and a lot of money. Between 1870 and 1900, there was a major industry on the creek. Stevens, he was a wool merchant in England. He came out here and he set up a wool scour, a tannery and a fellmongery. All of those industries would have been really heavily polluters. So the creek must have been in a shocking state of pollution when those industries were closed down. And yet, by the 1930s, when we were playing on the creek, it had fully recovered to the extent that there was probably a dozen native fish species. There were eels, there were tortoises, water dragons, plenty of wildlife. And the water was in pristine condition. Norman Creek goes up an awful long way up past Mount Cravat and there's very little timber up that way, very little open ground so if it roars down with rain up there it's down here in three or four hours. One of the big issues of the Norman Creek catchment has always been flooding, 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 flooding. It's had a whole history of flooding impacts. In 1893, we had a huge flood and there was a lot of damage to what houses had been built. And I think there was a realisation that this is actually flood prone land and shouldn't be subdivided. The creek here was, was straightened out at some stage. This very large meander here um, actually no longer exists. Where we're sitting, instead of the creek going in and out, it runs straight. It's a straight channel through there. So there must have been a lot of landfill um, put in, in, including where we're standing. During the 1930s, the first bit of concrete channelling was put in. The first section, which is now in a shocking state of repair, was from Logan Road to Cornwall Street. Places that used to be um, open grassland or bits and pieces of remnant forest along the creek 
have been progressively getting turned into development, which means more impervious surfaces, cement and bitumen, which means more water runs into the creek, which means we see more intense runoff. It's stagnant, it doesn't flow anywhere near what it was. When I seen all, all the tributaries and all the creeks up here that flowed, you, well, you could say that it's neglected. Norman Creek is a no-go zone. The landmark in Brisbane's east has been found to contain dangerously high levels of enterococci, a bacteria normally found in faecal matter. Weekly monitoring by Brisbane City Council found while contamination in other parts of the city's waterways had improved, Norman Creek had not. I've always had a, a feeling of, of, of our local waterway, something not right. And the hardest thing I, I, I felt was getting across to anybody around you. This is ugly, isn't it? I, and I'd actually walked through this area when it was very much wasteland and thought, well, wouldn't this be a wonderful area to revegetate and rehabilitate? And one day a leaflet came into my mailbox saying, we're a group who are interested in revegetating the creek. If you're interested in being part of this, please come to a meeting at the East Brisbane Community Centre at six o'clock. This is four hectares of former industrial land there wasn't even a blade of grass. So everything you see around us, we've actually planted or nature's done. I'm a compulsive weeder <laughs> and uh, I don't actually have a role, but it's just historically, I've been the one who's outlasted everybody else down there. <laughs> You don't have to be working on a creek bank to make a difference. The work that we do in Bennett's Bush uh, is directly connected to the health of Norman Creek. What we improve this far up, the system absolutely impacts the health of Norman Creek and then of course the river and the bay. I think everybody on Norman Creek is doing it for love. If, if it's not love of, uh, of, the, of the boat, it's love of the creek or love of the environment. One of our aims is to have this naturalised corridor from the headwaters of Tui Forest all the way through to the Risen River, including all the tributaries. So you had this mosaic ribbon of, of green as habitat as well as involving the highly urbanised catchment. This is the most urbanised catchment in Queensland. There is very, very little left to work with. And I think you've got to be realistic about that. The reality is, no, you can't go back to how things were. But by naturalising, you can emulate a natural waterway. You could actually do that at the same time, carry out proper mitigation. You can bring people in to appreciate the, the naturalisation of that waterway. So you, it, it becomes a community asset. I don't know how many species are here now, but everybody comes here, talks about the bird life, and you can hear it. <laughs> 